And here we go once again, ladies and gentlemen. This bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist standing five feet, six inches tall. He weighed in officially at the featherweight limit, 146 pounds even. This veteran has 30 bouts under his credit, 20 victories, nine defeats, one draw, and one no contest. Fighting out of Cambridge, England, here is Robbie the Flame Olivier. And next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist standing six feet, one inch tall. He weighed in 145 and one half pounds and brings a veteran record of 12 victories and five defeats. He fights at a Malmo, Sweden. Here is Marty Spencer. <laughs> Referee in charge of the action is Rich Mitchell. Referee Rich Mitchell about to get our first fight on the main card underway here at Cage Warriors 66. I've really been looking forward to this one, Brad. We can say that about pretty much every single fight on this card. Absolutely stacked night of action. Martin Svensson in the pink shorts. Robbie Olivier in the black with flame trim. Obviously the reach advantage, the most interesting thing to note. Straight off the bat about this one, Robbie Olivier usually has a very bouncing style. You never know whether he's going to pop up from that lowered stance with an overhand right or change level for the takedown. And immediately in on the legs of Spencer, lovely trip. Beautiful trip takedown and a nice big forearm shot to follow. He is a second or third damn black belt in judo, brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well. So very well versed in the takedown and ground game is Robbie Olivier. But Svensson has a tricky guard and just genetically, someone with this kind of limb length is really tough to deal with. You know, we've seen so of got to watch out for the triangle here. Robbie pulling his way out of that one. Yeah, look how tight he's going to look to keep his head on the outside. Now finding both hands back inside. One thing we know about Robbie is he's definitely comfortable sitting in a fighter's guard and grinding away. You know, he's, he's training with some absolute beasts on the mat at Tsunami in Cambridge and the links that those guys have here in Europe and with gyms like BKK Fighters, wrestling and grappling really is their forte. Yeah, I mean, let's touch on that for a second because one of Robbie's main training partners who of course fought recently is Luke Barnett who is even taller than Martin Svensson. Six foot six. Exactly, and the, you know, Robbie's been dealing with that kind of limb length for, for some time but you know, Svensson is tricky on the ground. He's got, we've already seen, he's, you know, he's looking to open his guard, he's looking to cut these angles, he's looking to attack, and Olivier is going to have to be very careful indeed. Well, one of the problems with fighting bigger fighters like this, Josh, is, is you can't get training partners to mimic them always. And, and Robbie, as you said, has an absolutely perfect, uh, a perfect model for that in Luke Barnett, and also a, a 200 pound guy as well. So perhaps throwing around Martin Svensson might not be too much trouble, but Svensson now doing his best to neutralize Robbie Olivier up on the cage. Olivier applying the pressure with his shoulders and head. You can see how Svensson's overhook, he can almost then reach all the way across to the far side of Olivier's body. Really does present some interesting challenges and jumping triangle attempt. And has he locked this? Robbie. Oh, Robbie Olivier is going to have to watch his arm here. And pops Olivier. out very nicely. Great work. Dropping the hammer on the way out as well. How unpredictable is Martin Svensson? Olivier with the gable grip around the arm. Look for him to really dump Svensson here if he can get his hips underneath him. <laughs> well, we've talked about it a lot already, Josh, but you know he's, he's got the back control there, but the, the choke is so far away yeah. purely because Svensson it is so tall. Robbie Olivier, five feet six inches tall to Svensson, six one. It's going to be interesting to see what Robbie's takedown game from here is. He tries the suplex and he, see he turns him to the side at which the arm was trapped. That means Svensson wasn't going to, going to be able to post out. Olivier looked for the choke and Svensson just uh, used the opportunities to stand back up. But a nice scramble for the man from Warboys in Cambridgeshire. Beautiful judo throw there. Trip takedown. Robbie Olivier's got the neck here. Well, we saw that Jim Ayler's had the neck of Martin Svensson very early and we really thought that fight, for a few moments at least, was over. But we saw how tough the Swede can be. Olivier moves to a technical mount now. Fantastic Back work from Robbie Olivier. You can see he's, he's getting his base wide with his legs because he's expecting to have to move if 
There's a big bridge from Svensson, or his arms come down to the hips and push. He can obviously cover so much distance with that bridge. Big punches there from Robbie Olivier. Olivier with one hook on the back now. Svensson's going to have to be careful. You do not want a man with the grappling credentials of Robbie Olivier on your back like this. This is good work from Olivier in this opening round. Good portions of control, a couple of good takedowns. He knows that when he can get inside, the technical nature of those takedowns is going to see him through. Technical mount, now back to the, the back with both hooks. Just staying glued to him, taking away every inch of space. Every time there's an opening, Robbie Olivier landing some strikes. Big punches from Robbie Olivier. Svensson trying to cover up. Not really got anywhere to go from this position. Has to watch for the armbar as well. Yeah, technical mount for Olivier. I think we're just going to see him see this round out now. Olivier's looking for that arm there. Oh, last few seconds. I don't think he's going to quite break it. And time was Robbie Olivier's biggest enemy there. Really good first round for the flame in the books. As you, as you said, we know Robbie can go for three. Let's take a look at some of the action now. Here's this early takedown from Olivier. Brilliant technique there. As you said, the Gita background coming into play. Yeah, here was Svensson attempting the jumping triangle, and he was so close, but he just got stuck on the cage for a moment. And then he transitioned to the armbar. Olivier pops out. And from there, it was really just Olivier controlling the rest of the fight. Here's a couple of good takedowns. There we go, all the way across for the Haragoshi. More big punches coming in from Robbie Olivier. And going for that armbar at the end of the round. Yeah, a few more seconds, and that would have been a very interesting scramble to have to uh, see the end of. When last we saw Robbie Olivier in the cage, he wasn't as active on the ground as he'd like to be. He's carrying an injury into that fight in London last year. What we're seeing tonight is a very active Olivier. He's not just grinding this one out, he's throwing strikes, he's looking to advance those positions. And as we saw at the end of that round, looking for submissions too. I mean, he's so good with the work rate. That's what tends to put a lot of guys away. It's very hard to sort of out-scramble him and outwork him. Svensson trying to establish this range now. I'm surprised he's sticking with the kicks and he hasn't pumped that jab out a little bit more. Expect him maybe to use the more straight pushing kicks, really take advantage of that range he's got. Goes up high that time. Olivier going for the body, swinging for the head. Really winging that one, and you see lovely work to get inside from Olivier. Earns himself another good takedown, but it's a nice overhook for Svensson here. See if he can use that control point. Martin Svensson saying in the build-up to this fight that he feels this fight should be for the vacant Cage Warriors featherweight title. And Looking for the triangle here. See Olivier is trying to keep that right elbow just on the outside of the thigh. He lets it sneak inside. He expects Svensson's incredibly long legs to whip up and around. There you go. See how Olivier is getting his posture up back straight. If Svensson can break him down here, though, Olivier has got to get his head up here. Well, those physical attributes of Martin Spencer really come in handy. Wow, they really do. Pumping a few elbows in there. Oh, and he's managed to lock the triangle. Great guard work from Martin Svensson. He only has one triangle win on his record. And a long time to work here. Staying busy with the strikes as well. Can't quite see what's happening with Olivier's right hand. Lovely work from Swenson to mix up the strikes and the submission attempts. Anxious to, moments for Robbie Olivier. Trying to peel that hand off there with Swenson. Returns to dropping big elbows to the top of Olivier's head. Yeah, really nice strikes here. You can see that, uh, that left leg of Swenson is a bit vertical down the back. If he can get it a bit more horizontal across the back of Olivier. There we go, that's the angle and you can see this is big trouble for Robbie Olivier. This is a dangerous position for Olivier to be in. Oh, and Robbie Olivier absolutely calm in this position, but Martin Svensson is piling on the damage here. Very difficult for Robbie Olivier to intelligently defend in this position. 
Svensson again adjusting his hips, again going back to the elbows. A long time for Robbie Olivier to see this one out. Oh, is he creating some space on the left side though? He's trying to, he's got to watch the arm bar here. You see Olivier is trying to keep that left arm on the outside of the body. That frame is just keeping his artery a little bit open. But the big pass from Martin Svensson. This is a relentless assault from the big Swedish. He's opened up a big cut on the head of Olivier. Olivier again trying to scramble. Blood pouring from the head of Robbie Olivier here. Martin Svensson doing damage with the elbows. I mean, even if he can't get the finish with the submission, this control position is phenomenal for Svensson. Olivier now going to try and pull down on the knee. It's going to be getting slippery, though. And we talk oh, about it. Incredible! What tenacity for Robbie Olivier, but Martin Svensson has taken a hold of this second round. We talked about Olivier being a true veteran of the scene. And that's the kind of tenacity that comes with that kind of experience, Josh. I mean, that whole time he'll have been looking to try and stay calm, slow his heart rate down. It's one thing to do it when you, you know, someone's trying to submit you, but when they're opening up cuts on your head with elbows as well, Robbie Olivier showing what those 31 fights have taught him. Olivier back on top now. Let's see what he can do in the final minute of this second round. What's the back of his head? Head into the chin, Rob. Head into the chin. And you've got to think that this round go, may be a lost cause for Robbie Olivier now, but if he can ride it out, things could be very different in the third. So you see how Olivier immediately pops up, try and move around those legs. He's going to try and pull the hips away. If he can sit that right thigh, his own right thigh behind Svensson's legs, he can really keep the Swede planted. Now looking to step over and control the legs. 27 seconds, mate. Spencer looking for a control. Oh, the leg lock side possibly. Olivier does have a pretty good leg lock arsenal, but Svensson again so dangerous with these limbs. Final 10 seconds of the round. seconds, hold him there, control the biceps. Olivier being told to hold his man. Live to fight another day or another round more aptly. Well, Olivier up straight away. Svensson, well, maybe perhaps Svensson is wondering how he didn't get the finish there because he had a lot of opportunities in any event he did a tremendous amount of damage let's take a look at some of that action here's an early takedown from olivier straight into the guard of the big swedish martin svensson and here's that triangle the setup came very quickly josh well you see olivier got the initial defense in he got his head up but those legs of martin svensson are so long he was able to slowly break olivier's posture back down and once he did this was just huge elbows oh, there phenomenal from martin striking and grappling combinations from Martin Svensson. And Josh, a lot of blood there, but it, it has to be said that when you get cut on the top of your head like that, there's a lot of blood pressure, so it does often look a lot worse than it is. Yeah, and I can't really see just yet where the cut is in relation to Olivier's eyes. So it looks to me as though the cut is uh, fairly well away, and we're not going to have too many problems with it interfering with the rest of the bout. Get back, get back. It's one of those things, the Let's limb go. length of Martin Svensson. If you can get to side control or a dominant position, those limbs become a massive disadvantage because you can't sneak them back inside to retain your guard positions. But if you get stuck in between them or in front of you, whew, it's hard work. Svensson going for a knee there to start this third and final round. Olivier immediately applying the pressure up against the cage. And Josh, you know, we've, we've talked before about fighters going for submissions and burning their limbs out, but the, uh, the mental toll that, that takes on you coming seemingly so close to finishing a fight and having your man fight out of it and, and come back to you like that must be very disheartening. Well, it's, yeah, it's one of those things that look at how uh, Olivier shucks to the back there. Very nice indeed. Svensson had a good control point but not able to maintain it. Olivier dragging this to the ground. I mean, exactly as you said, Brad, the, the momentum can often shift. You know, you think, should I have finished it? You know, I had a chance. Am I going to get another one? It can really start playing havoc with you, but... Olivier now looking to take the back. Svensson using the cage to re-establish very nicely and a good takedown from him. Svensson on top again. And that cut appears to have reopened. It's actually just above Robbie Olivier's eye. I think round one to Olivier, round two clearly to Svensson. Was it enough for a 10-8? I don't know, Olivier did score the takedown and end on top, looking to progress. So perhaps enough offense and intelligent defense from him to warrant a 10-9, in which case we may well be going down to this very third round. 
Right now, Martin Svensson's got a good, solid side control here. But, I mean, this is where a, a Svensson short... looking, perhaps, for a choke there. Yeah, he's... Snaking his hand under, trying uh, to get it around the bicep. Looking for a dart. I mean, this is where the shorter limb length of Robbie Olivier will help. It'll help him defend, sneak his legs back inside. But he can't afford to accept this position for too long. Got to look to get back up. Looks for a leg briefly. Still everything to play for. Just a shade under three minutes to go in our first main card contest here at Cage Warriors 66. Svensson looking to step around that hook. Olivier tracking with it. Svensson clearly controlling this third round. Olivier now looking to secure the leg. Transitioning to the other side. 50-50 here. Oh, not quite. Sorry, couldn't quite uh, see whether the leg was through or not. It's nice yeah. scrambling work from Svensson on top. Certainly a spaghetti junction situation going on with the legs of Olivier and Svensson there. Svensson now on top. Olivier with the butterfly guard. And it's so easy for Svensson to land punches from those positions. Yeah, and Olivier looks like he might have scrambled to a top position here. And he's going to have to, if he wants to take this round, he's going to have to put some serious work rate and damage on Martin Svensson because Svensson earned the takedown, spent a good deal of time in a controlling top position. Over half the round already gone. Olivier on top that now, now though. His corner asking for volume. Oh, back with hooks. Let's see if he starts throwing the strikes in to open up this choke. Toes out of that cage. You walk up it, keep your toes out. Our referee Rich Mitchell there just warning Fenson about toes in the cage. You can push your foot off the cage. You're not allowed to hook your toes through it. Just a little warning there for the big Swedish. Yeah, Olivier was looking to climb his way back up, but establishing inside the guard now. And let's see if uh, as if Svensson attacks or if he feels he's up and he's winning this round. He may just deem to want to hold Robbie Olivier here, see out this last minute. Be a big risk to take. Olivier looking to start throwing off some sharp punches. Svensson dropping the big elbow. Olivier really needs to push the tempo here. Yeah, Svensson looking like he's trying to fish for a guillotine. And those legs going up again. Slowly snaking northwards for Martin Svensson. Such a hard guard to deal with. Short hammer fist oh, there from Olivier. Oh, triangle entry again he's looking for. Kimura now perhaps. Oh, and the switch. Olivier looks to use it to go to the back. Nice work from Svensson to force the scramble. Final 10 seconds of the final round here at Cage Warriors 66. Svensson pulling out and mounting a final assault here. Looking to draw some big shots. Well, we're going to go to the judges' scorecards, but I think on balance that third round perhaps is going to go to Martin Svensson. And with that very dominant second round, it's probably going to give him the victory in my opinion here. I tend to agree with you that on that one, Josh. Let's just refresh our memories and take a little look at some of the action. Some great cage grappling here from these two featherweights. Yeah, this was the takedown from Svensson, that outside reek. And did a lot of good work on top here, maintaining the position. Trying to land some ground and pound. Olivier scrambled for the leg locks, but wasn't able to secure the position. When he did get on top, Olivier had some good portions of control, but no real striking offense. A tenacious performance from both men here at Cage Warriors 66, and a great way to get our main card under the way. Both men, both men definitely feeling the effects of being in a back and forth three round war. As we await our judges to tally their scorecards. How did you see that fight? Let us know on social media. Tweet us at Cage Warriors with the hashtag CWFC66. And we will throw this one to our MC Joe Martinez in the cage to make it official.
Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards, and here are the scoring totals. Judge David Leatherby has it 29-28 for Svensson. Judge Ben Cartledge, 29-28 for Olivier. And Judge Barry Oglesby scores it 29-28 for your winner by split decision, Martin Svensson! Well, Josh, as you suspected, Martin Svensson takes the decision. One judge to give it to Robbie Olivier, though, really does reflect the uh, close nature of that third round. Both guys definitely gave the judges stuff to work with, but Martin Svensson doing just enough on two judges' scorecards to take that decision. Yeah, I think really it came down to that third round, and Martin Svensson just having the better of the top position.